Hello everybody, welcome to this video tutorial. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to make a Bargello quilt. Um, I posted a picture um, a few weeks ago now of a Bargello that I made using the Threaders um, fabric and it just went down an absolute storm. Um, I've loved seeing everyone's versions, it's been absolutely lovely. So what I'm going to show you first of all is the original blanket that I made. Um, I will just stand up for this, I'm not sure if I'm going the right way around. Uh, but that's the original Bargello that I made. Um, as you can see it waves across the quilt which it's just absolutely lovely. So I'm going to teach you how to make this. Now I'm going to teach you how to make a larger version. So for the larger version you're going to need two jelly rolls. Now the jelly rolls that I used are from um, Amazon. I'll leave a link in the, in the description below um, so you can have a look um, and what sizes they are. So I'm using a pastel multicoloured one and I'm using one that's faded reds and pinks. Um, which pretty much looks like this. So what I've done is I've split each jelly roll in half, so two of each colour in one pile, two of each colour in the other pile, so I've got two different piles. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay them out in the order that I want my quilt to fade down in. I am going to start with um, the reds um, and then fade across to the colours and end with reds again. So it should give me a really nice wave. Um, I'm just going to lay them out on the table. Um, I'm going to insert a picture here. And that's the order that I'm going to have. Um, so after I've laid them all out, I then use my heat erasable pen and I number them all so I know the exact order that I want to stitch them in because if you do drop them and you make a bit of a mess like this it really doesn't matter. So once I've laid them all out and I've numbered them I'm going to just stitch them all together. Each row I'm just going to stitch it together and I've got one here that I've already done one section already. I'm going to end up with two of these because I'm using two jelly rolls. So if I just open this out for you it is very very large so this is what I've ended up with, you can see, all these strips. Now, once I've got all these strips, I'm going to lay this right side up on my table and I'm going to take the dark end and I'm going to take it up to the other end. So I've got right sides to right sides and I'm going to stitch these two together at the end here. So I'm making a cylinder of fabric. Once I've done that I'm going to then cut my strips and I'll come back and show you that in a moment. You have your two tubes of fabric made up from your jelly roll pieces. We don't attach these tubes together, we want to keep them separate um, and now I'm going to show you the cutting pattern. So this is the cutting pattern. We're going to start cutting our strips from one inch. We're going to then go up to one and a quarter inches and we're going to carry on in half an inch increments until we get to three and a half inches. Then you'll notice that we're going down in cuts. So now we're going to three and a quarter inches, three, two and three quarters, two and a half, two and a quarter, etc. until our smallest cut of one and three quarter inches. Then we go back up the scale again. So two inches, two and a quarter, two and a half, two and three quarters, etc. When we get to our largest cut of two and a half inches, we go down the scale again. So we get to two and three quarter inches. You then find your two and three quarter inches up here and you follow the pattern again. And you just keep doing that until you run out of fabric and you've got all of your strips laid out. You will need for this, and it's absolutely essential, you will need your cutting mat, your ruler, and your rotary cutter. Um, I'm using the thread as one. I wouldn't use anything else. These just work absolutely perfectly. Um, and so now I'm going to start doing my cuts. So before we can't start cutting our strips, we're going to want to, want to neaten off this edge. Um, I'm just going to do that off camera because I'm going to do it on the other side of my cutting mat. I'm going to take off um, an inch from this side because I don't want any of this selvage here. Um, and I want to start off from a really, really neat, crisp line. Now we've got an absolutely beautiful line that we're going to start doing our cuts from. What you will need is one of our heat erasable markers because every time you do a cut you're going to number your piece, um, your strip so that if, for instance, if you drop anything, if you come back to this project, you know exactly the order in which 
um, they need to be placed in. Also what I would do is I would take my sheet and I would tick off as I go. So I would probably write this out a couple more times just to be safe. And then I would just give a little mark next to each one after I do the cut. So that then if I do need to come back to this at any point, I know exactly what my next cut needs to be. So we're going to start off here and it's going to be one inches on our first cut. Okay, so I'm just going to get my um, ruler and I'm going to um, use my uh, yellow guideline here and just make sure that is absolutely against the edge of my fabric. And then I'm going to do my first cut. Then I'm going to move it up the board and I'm just going to do that the whole way down. You can, of course, fold this fabric over and do your cut that way if you'd prefer. So again, lining my ruler up so the yellow line is exactly down the side here because we know this line is perfectly straight because we just cut it and cut and then we take this up again you can fold it if you so wish I prefer to do it this way take your yellow line make sure it's flush against the edge the whole way down take your rotary cutter and cut and then I've just got one little piece to do at the bottom here I'm not going to risk it by just doing it freehand I am going to just cut that okay and there is our first piece I'm then going to take my heat erasable marker and I'm going to number it on the brown one at the top and I'm going to label it number one now I'm going to do my next cut. So going by our pattern this piece is now going to be one and a quarter inches um, this is just now going to be the next line across because these come in quarter of an inch increments. So I'm now going to take the line that was next to the yellow line, so my black line there, and if you want to, you can get a bit of masking tape and just mask this off so you know exactly where you're going. I don't need to at this moment because I can see it perfectly well. So that's one and a quarter inches and I'm going to cut. Okay, and again, I'm going to go down the fabric and I'm going to now off camera cut all my pieces out when I get to the end of this piece of fabric I'm going to continue on the other roll that I've created and I'm going to continue in the pattern order as written down on our sheet Now we've got all our strips, as you can see, all different sizes but all numbered. We're going to take our first strip, number one, and we're going to open it up at the top here so it makes one strip. And there we go, so there's number one, so that's one strip. Now we're going to take our number two piece and we're going to shunt it down so that the next colour is the section that we open. So now our number two that we've written and one colour above. So we open this seam and then we lay that down next to our number one piece. Okay, so now we've got the white at the top. I'm just going to do a couple more for you. So number three piece, we take our number three and we shunt the three down two places. So now we've got the three here and we're going to open the seam here. Flip that round so it's right way up and place it next to that one there. Okay. Now let's do number four. So I think you probably get the drift now. So let's take number four and we're going to shunt the number four down. We've done the pink, now we're on to the next pink. Okay, so now I'm going to open that seam. And then I'll place that down there. I'm going to now do this with all of my pieces. I'm going to continually go down. I'm not going to change the order. I am constantly going to do one down from where I 
just started. So there's no um, going back up the scale. It's always one down from each time I started. And when I've done that, I shall lay them all out and I will come back to you. Okay, so I've undone all of my strips and I've just numbered them all along the top so that again, if I drop them or anything like that, I know exactly the right order. I do have one um, around my neck currently because I undid it round at the wrong place. But all I'm going to do is stitch it back together again and then take it apart at the right piece. No, the right place. So now I'm going to lay them all out on the floor so you can see how this will look. I'm just laying these all out and I think I'm just going to go straight to the sewing machine and start attaching them together and then I'll give you a picture. After each, maybe every two or three rows, you're gonna to wanna to press this because otherwise it becomes very fiddly to work with. So just press out maybe every three rows um, and trust me, it will make your life a lot easier. Here is the final piece. I think you'll agree that it looks absolutely fantastic. Obviously I've got to edge it, I've got to quilt it, I've got to back it, but this tutorial was just to show you the technique of creating this wave. Absolutely stunning and the pug thinks so too. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, do share it with your friends if you think they'd be interested and I will see you on Hochanda really soon.